this is not even the worst second to last boss of all time. This is the worst boss of all time and possibly the worst thing of all time. This is just an abomination of a, of a boss encounter. It does every single thing wrong that a boss can do wrong. Hey guys, real quick, I want to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Omni Heroes. If you're on the hunt for an exciting casual strategy RPG where you can customize your heroes, unleash powerful abilities, and strategize your way to victory, Omni Heroes might be the game for you. As an Omni Guardian, you dive into a realm of magic, monsters, and epic battle where you'll fight away the demons to rescue the Valkyries. Omni Heroes offers an immersive experience that's perfect for both casual gamers and RPG enthusiasts alike. So if you have an urge for strategy, this game has got you covered. You can formulate and strategize team comps with 100 plus superheroes, all with three different types of synergies. As for the Valkyries, I find Dorabella, the Ethereal Valkyrie, an arcane mage of unparalleled magical prowess and wisdom, also known as the Empire's Brain, to have the coolest synergies. The game has also received recommendations from the App Store and Google Play. Omni Heroes is now available on both the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. If you go download now, you can claim up to 777 pulls and secure a minimum of five legendary heroes. There's a link in the description. And thanks again to Omni Heroes for sponsoring this video. All right, Chad, I do want to give you all a little heads up. So we have actually done this before, but it was a long time ago. It was before Dragonflight came out. So we do have some potential. We've had two more raids, so some potential new additions to this. Last time it was intended to be a YouTube video and Franck just juiced it. I don't know exactly what happened, but it just got lost in the nether. The good news about me is I don't remember things well, so I don't remember any of it other than I definitely remember what the first boss was. <laughs> and I'm, yeah. I'm pretty sure that one's going to be the same, but for the rest of it, we'll kind of do that. So first of all, Dreadnose, how are you doing? Pretty good. How about you? Good. Did you, I guess you, uh, we both got done watching the TGP. Yeah. Pretty good day, huh? Yeah. Good day. And this group is stacked. Yeah. Like, I'm going to do the Sanctum of Domination lockout because that's what we did for the best raid of all time. I don't remember if that's what we did for this, but just to keep it consistent, I think we will just continue and use the, like, three bosses initially into the fourth and fifth as a choice into, like, the mid-raid wall, I guess you could say, and then uh, all the way down. Actually, wait, this is super off topic. What is your opinion on mid-raid walls? I think they're cool. I think the mid-raid walls... Most of the, a lot of them have been really fun, right? Like Painsmith from Sanctum was, was a good example of that. I like them. Obviously when they're too hard, then it's a big problem, right? Like that's, that is something that has happened in the past for, there's been a lot of guilds that have like disbanded on Halandris or Gorefiend or whatever that, that pre-nerf or that takes too long to get nerfed. That's actually my, I think, biggest issue with it is when you're talking about like when they're too hard, I feel like the ones where the good players in the game, like people who like play Mythic, they're really sufficient, consistent Mythic guilds. They look at bosses like Gorefiend and Painsmith and Anduin. And wasn't there one this expansion? So, okay, well, Skarn's a totally fucking different thing, but <laughs> yeah. very, very different thing. But like for those, like you look back and you're like, wow, a Ashvane, I loved doing fights like that. Those were super hard, but those are also the bosses that just absolutely slaughter guilds. I think Anduin killed more guilds than any boss in the history of this game. So like, it's so polarizing. Like people look at it in a negative light like that too, if they're not nerfed in time for the guilds that usually expect those kind of nerfs. I think that's the big deal, right? Like Painsmith, I think they did a pretty good job of just opening a hole in that middle spike line like a month after the raid came out and that was good timing. But then like the Sepulchre nerfs, I think all were like a month and a half late and that guilds died in that time. Yep, I definitely agree with that. So again, Chad, I kind of explained it earlier, but I think we're gonna do like a, what is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I like I like 10, we'll keep it to 10, uh, which will allow us to choose like a bad last boss, a bad second to last boss, and a couple mid tiers in every direction. We are gonna go by, the position in the raid isn't static. Like if there was a middle-ish tier boss and we wanna put it near the beginning of it being bad, that's fine. I know in our other one, we put Holandris as like, I think the third to last boss, which is like more consistent with its difficulty level. We might do that, but generally speaking, we're gonna stick to, stick to where they are in the raid when they came out and then kind of make a raid as if like a raid came out tomorrow and these were the bosses in it. This would be like the worst raid that's ever existed is like the idea, which is kind of just like a fun, fun experiment and the ability to talk about some cool past raid bosses. All right. Are you ready to begin? Yeah, just real quick. I, I want to say we're, we're going to give like a little bit of bonus points the older the raid is, right? Like if your thing came out in 2007 or something, you're, it's hard to, it's hard for a classic boss to be on here, even though like 
those would be worse than a lot of these. Yeah. So if we go farther back than like Wad, it's because something was real stinker. Yeah, very, very good, very good point. In fact, I would say for the most part, we're probably going to largely avoid most things in like at least Kata, maybe Wrath BC Classic for sure. And then like we might dabble in Kata. The reason is, is those bosses back then, it was just like a different world. It's like literally almost 20 years ago. Like for example, if a boss came out today and all it did was melee your tank and do one thing, you'd be like, this boss fucking sucks. I mean, look at Magmarax. Magmarax is like five times more than what I just said and everyone thinks that boss fucking sucks, right? So like if that came out back in like 2005, people would be like, woo, like this fucking boss owns, you know? So like uh, the era, eras have changed and it's okay to acknowledge that and probably not call those bosses bad because they probably weren't bad back then. And also it, I don't know if you played, you played since Classic, right? I played since 2.1, since uh, Black Temple. Okay, so I if there's anything that you want to throw in from like Wrath and BC specifically, I'll leave that entirely up to you because I I uh, did not play then, and then also there is not no I I don't think it's I don't think it's fair to include anything from TBC and uh, Wrath. All right, hell yeah. So we are going to naturally start at the beginning. So this one is probably not going to be very controversial. So we 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 both know what it's going to be, but we can probably talk about some like honorable mentions. I think people. More recent WoW players might even think of Vigilant Guardian from the Sepulchre race or raid. But I think that's a little... I, I swear normal and heroic of that boss have tainted people's minds forever because you still had to do like heroic for tier back then. But Mythic is actually like not that bad. I, I think Vigilant Guardian on Mythic was like an okay... I don't even know if it was a bad first boss. It was like an okay first boss. It's just like you hit a boss the full time and you just AoE on top of it. And that's it. And that's, I don't know, it's fine. On Heroic and Normal, I think if it never got better than that, I think Vigilant Guardian could actually be in contention for this. Yeah, I agree. And I, I think it's good, though, to clarify, like, we're doing Mythic or, like, highest difficulty or whatever. Correct. Yeah. Is what we're mostly thinking about. And so I, I agree. Like, Vigilant Guardian, that fight was pretty good on Mythic. It was, the you could fight the boss from the start. You know, you dragged it around. Like, sure, there was a little bit of waiting, but... Mostly you just got to hit something. On Heroic and Normal, you didn't have anything to actually hit, and you were just sitting around waiting. The boss we're going to put here didn't have that, though. It was just all waiting on all difficulties all the time. Is there anything else that is even close to? Like, what is another... I actually feel so, like Blizzard's made good first bosses for a while. I think Champions of Light from Battle of Desire Lore <laughs> is something that you could you could dock points for being, like, so easy that it was like that was a tier where you got baited into a lot of one out of nine mythic lockouts uh and if you were like trying to pug around early bosses and oh yeah no way you were killing grong after killing that thing so oh yeah grong was like su actually randomly yeah. really hard and then uh and then that boss was super easy yeah you could you i remember like that was one of the only bosses i can remember in history where we had no healers in on progression of mythic champions of light because you knew no matter what you couldn't wipe so we just had like a few dps players just for gear, just swap healing. Like, it was just a total meme. Yeah, I think that's there. I, I don't know if there's any other first boss that would be on the level of that. It's more like maybe bosses with a lot of RP are waiting, but even a boss like Shriekwing has, you know, a really long RP phase, kind of. But even then, I bet a lot of people would put Shriekwing as one of their favorite first bosses. Shriekwing was actually really, really well-liked. Yeah, boss was sweet. That was... uh. I think a, a pretty good welcome to mythic type boss as well on on that difficulty, which uh, is a good thing for a first boss to do. So, all right, I would I would be wanting that in a best boss, maybe maybe not quite best, but pretty close. All right, so we're gonna look at the uh, I actually pulled up for just to have on the background here the fat boss guide of mythic oh, hellfire no. assault. This is the boss that both of us would universally put in the worst boss, worst first boss ever in mythic. This was a I want to say like six or seven minute encounter. I could check logs and tell, but there was very little way to speed it up. And it was just running around the room and killing things that took forever to spawn. There wasn't like a gong to like speed it up. And it was just a miserable, miserable fight. This like made you not even want to zone into the raid because you had to do this in a, one of the longest farm periods ever, I think added to this, but you just every single week, no one ever stopped complaining about this fight. I don't know if there's a single guild that killed this boss that did not have someone actively complaining about it the entire time for, like, the whole farm period. Yeah, this was uh, uniquely bad. And again, it's it's reasonably old now in WAD, but it still is just... It's so bad, and it should have been fixed so much more. Like, it should have been fixed at some point during this 12-year farm period that uh, the Hellfires that it all had. All right, so we'll, we'll leave that easily as our number one. Perfect. All right, so 
second bosses. Um, there's a lot of really good second bosses. There aren't a ton of terrible ones that that come to mind. It can also, second and third bosses can kind of be, if there's like two unbelievably bad like third bosses, we can maybe put one of them second. Oh, interesting. Someone put Blast Furnace as second. Yeah, I think like Blast Furnace was technically doable as like one of the early fights. Black Ark Foundry had like a super weird raid layout. I've heard people say Huntsman. Huntsman was like apparently like a really well-liked one too. It's like kind of easy, pretty thematic. Eye of the Jailer felt bad. I feel like I'm out... Eye of the Jailer feels worse now, right? Because Amalgamation Chamber kind of just did everything Eye of the Jailer was trying to do, but just so much better. Yeah, Eye of the Jailer, I don't think Eye of the Jailer descends to the level of worst of all time, but it was definitely like mediocre. Maybe yeah. if we can't find anything better for this slot. What do you have in mind? Yeah, I mean, it's hard. I, I'm trying to think of awful second boss experiences. Blackwater Behemoth? Okay, yeah, so that would be a common answer, but I actually... I want to defend Blackwater Behemoth. So Blackwater Behemoth was like, oh, it's the underwater boss fight. And on PTR, it was like kind of miserable back in that tier. But I don't know. I feel like they released it in a spot where it really was not painful at all to do that fight. Like the swimming wasn't too bad. The whole fight wasn't too bad. It was tuned to not be too bad. I think that was a good example of like, if you've got some kind of experimental idea that is some sort of gimmick boss, and you put it second in your raid, and you tune it so that nobody wipes more than five times to it, like, mission accomplished. Now, maybe there were guilds that did wipe more than five times to it that are going to be very unhappy, but I don't know. I feel, I feel like that uh, deserves a pass. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of, lot of takes here that aren't, like, super far away, but, dude, a lot of people are naming some bangers. They're, like, Mother from Old Ear. That was a fucking great fight. That was, a, that was a, all good. Yeah, I'm having to pull out the dungeon journal, man. I'm having yeah, to... Yeah, like... oh, I'm, I'm in the Dungeon J already. This is uh, something like uh, Elaritha Renferel from Emerald oh, Nightmare. You remember that That's thing? That's up there. The only thing is that boss is cool. It's like a spider. It is cool. Like, that's actually one of the weirdest things about Emerald Nightmare as a thing in general is, like, historically, one of the easiest raids ever was killed way too quickly. I think 17 hours after Exorcist zoned in, it died. But... Oftentimes, a slandered raid had a lot of very, very cool bosses in it. I actually think Ursok is one of the best second bosses oh, yeah. or potential second bosses of all time. Elrith Renferal, funny story, actually had a weird bug with it. So when it first came out on Mythic in NA, um, a couple of guilds went in right away before doing like any heroic split runs. And they they killed Elrith Renferal instantly because it had LFR health. Um, I, <laughs> I know that Easy, the guild Easy at the time did this. And a couple others, not a, not like on purpose. It's just like they killed it, uh, and it had LFR health, so it just died instantly on Mythic. And then they fixed it Im immediately after and buffed it to like a normal Mythic for everyone else, which I thought was kind of interesting. Can I interest you in like Mott or Skitra? Yeah, I've heard a lot of Mott and Skitra, so they both had weird parts of it. Skitra actually had a really cool mechanic where like you had to communicate between the phases. I think most people just had their tanks mark the ones they saw and then one of them marked all the ones they saw and then the one that was on the other side would just call the one that they didn't see and then they or they both saw and they would just kill that one so that like was a cool idea that was kind of made pretty easy and then mott i think the only bad thing about mott was you died if you were doing a lot of damage like if you popped all your cds and you didn't have a lot of externals or like a good healer core you would just kind of die because you were doing a lot of damage and that kind of feels like shit but it was like yeah, a... our infinite stars, infinite stars proc, and you're just gone. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot a fucking corruption. Yeah, you, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You just and, and like or like Twilight Dev on a DPS, like yeah. super early in progression when you still used corruptions like that. Yeah, just instantly dead. Okay, Chronomatic Anomaly and Triliax. As good of a raid as Nighthold is, I think both of those bosses were like a little. Triliax has some flavor value that is yeah. very high. Chronomatic Anomaly, yeah, that boss is kind of. Kind of whatever. Kind of yeah. I think maybe, maybe we just slam the Blackwater Behemoth for like meme value on this. Uh, See, I kind of agree order. with you though. So many people would say that, but I want to say that people had a predetermined thought about Blackwater Behemoth before it was ever came out. I remember that farm period. People were like, oh man, like this is, a, they're making a fucking stupid underwater boss. And it wasn't anywhere near as bad as people said it was going to be. And I, I just, I don't know. It, it, it kind of feels bad to put it there. Dude, I'm like scrolling through these things. I can't find a single second boss that I'm like, oh, that was dog shit. They were just all fine. Fuck. We could just give Blizzard a check mark and be like, 
All right, second boss is you. This is your. We your could. Good list. Do you remember what we put last time? We would have put. Something. I don't remember. No, I. I remember the first and last boss we picked. I don't remember any of the others. I guess we could like put another bad first boss, but like that's sure. that, that sounds like something we probably would have done. But we do need to kind of move on from it. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna. I'm double checking BFA real quick. I guess. Actually, dude, honestly, I feel like Radiance of Ashara was a worse boss than Blackwater Behemoth. <laughs> Like yeah, but you know what? The light or I'm almost positive we did this last time. I think I think we just did Champions of the Light second because it truly sucks. Like if the thing is, we're trying to make a bad raid, right? So like, I guess you could do some things like this because if you put any of the second bosses in here, you wouldn't. It wouldn't be bad. So I think you just do Champions of the Light as the second boss after you do Hellfire Assault, a truly hellish scenario. Yeah, I mean, this raid would have the benefit of being very easy to get a box from. <laughs> but, oh yeah <laughs> for fun value it'd be pretty bad did what they say just put hellfire assault again <laughs> so you, I'm down you, you zone in to hellfire assault and i think it'd be good to showcase another boss that was uh really bad okay so hellfire assault so now we have third bosses which is going to be kind of the same but can broaden our scope a little bit just of you know what bosses would be here but the thing is we considered a lot of third bosses for the second boss thing good we can introduce like senarth to the discussion perhaps here I don't know what your thoughts are on, on that one. I know that's one that's pretty polarizing among my guild. It's uh, like half uh, people that don't mind it and then half people that hate it. You know what? And that's one we wouldn't have talked about last time because Senarth did not exist yet. That's true. So that would give us some value besides just Bronk being an idiot to, uh, to do this now again. Yes, that would. Okay, random Bronk flame, all good. And that, But yeah, I, I think... I would say with Senarth, I really like the idea. Like, the whole, like, thematic, you're fighting an ice spider, you can be dragged off the edge, you can be, like, pulled off the edge, you slide around. They kind of just didn't hit. Like, I feel like the fight, maybe they even executed on that well, but it just wasn't ever fun doing the fight. Not to mention the tremendous amount of weird bugs with, like, movement and being, like, jolted in random directions if you had weird movement skills and stuff. Yeah, I... I think I, I'm kind of leaning towards Senarth here, actually, because that is, like, technically, like, a fourth boss, but you could definitely do it third. I think you could def you could make that argument. Yeah, I think it fits in this spot, because I don't want to use a second boss there. And we looked at a lot of the third bosses already, so... Ooh, ICC gunship battle. Yeah, gunship battle. If, if we want to go back to ICC, That's, that is kind of an obvious that, one. I wasn't considering going back there, but that fight does truly suck. That's, like... I mean, I don't know. People remember it fondly, though, because, like... They got Maybe. loot from it, and it was a good time in WoW and their lives, probably. And, like, that meant they could go try to get a Deathbringer's Will off the next boss. And, like, it's just free gear. This could be a false memory, but I think you could swap between Normal and Heroic, like, per boss back then as well. I think I remember, like, swapping to Heroic for that boss and then going back to Normal for the rest of the raid. I think there was something like that, yeah. That I could be just entirely gaslighting okay. yeah i mean maybe that takes the spot of champs of the light in the second spot but i i you know it, like loot pinatas i think were a lot more excusable back then than they are now as well so i mean i don't know like think about it when you kill kazara right now you know that zakali assault's already dead and like that's true so it's like as close to obviously there's infinitely more mechanics than loot ship but it's still kind of the same thing where that kind of stuff exists but people i don't think does anyone frown on Zakali Assault? Like, I mean, it's not, it's like a boss for sure. Why, how could you hate it? It just exists, you know? That was a boss that was very hated in PTR testing as well, but another one that just kind of ended up being fine by virtue of being an early boss that wasn't too offensive. Yeah, Zakali yeah. gets a pass because it's quick and you just get the AOE stuff real quick. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Like, it, it's just kind of, it, that's what they should do. Anytime there's PTR testing for a boss and everybody's like, oh, testing this boss was miserable, just, I don't know, make it kind of easy. And, you know? Not going to lie, whenever people do PTR in a boss and they're like, yo, this fight sucks, it actually ends up being good a lot. <laughs> like, like more than you'd think. I, I don't know if they take that feedback or something, but that has happened. I mean, the Holandris was the worst tested boss ever, and it ended up being a goat. They did have to, like, redesign it, though. The entire fight, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we're putting... I, I like I like Senarth. We're going to have worse bosses than Senarth, so I, I will get a thing. Also, random funny thing about Senarth is during the Vault Race to World first... We had, like, Displate, I guess, like, was... They didn't end up sponsoring us, but they were going to. And they sent us a bunch of Displates for the race. And what they chose to make into Displates, like, they had a map of Senarth's room. Like, like if you were to open your map in Senarth's room and it was, like, Senarth's lair or whatever it was called, like, 
they just made those into displays. And I just remember laughing so hard because I was like, who the fuck would ever buy this? Like, who who, who would hang up a map of fucking Senarth room in their room? <laughs> What's up, y'all? Big Snoop D O Double G. I want to welcome y'all to my house. This is the room where nobody gets to kick it at. It's called the Untouchable Room. <laughs> All right, what are we? What are we talking about here? Fourth and fifth. Okay, so now this is very broad. There's a bunch, a bunch of options, and I have one off the top of my head that I kind of just want to slam in there. People in chat were talking about it for the third boss. I. What is your opinion on E N R, the Life Finder boss? From, oh yeah. Uh, Oh yeah, that boss, you know, it, it has the beautiful mix of like waiting around, wiping to something stupid, wiping to like other people's job, not having anything that you can just hit, you know, and feel good about DPSing. Yeah, I'm, I'm down, slam it. That's uh, a- Yeah, that look, look, this is so good. I, I pulled up the, the VOD just to have something on my screen here. And it's just, this is the mythic world first kill, I think, of ENR the Life Finder. Or, like, like this was Method who got world first that raid. And it's some guy standing on a pillar, and then some guy next to him saying ye. Just, like, this is, like, <laughs> yeah. this is the middle of the fight. This isn't the beginning. This is, like, in the middle. Like, this is just a total fucking meme. So, yeah, I, yeah, ENR, I'm just gonna take a picture of the fucking ye, and that's going on the... Oh, that's good yeah. on the list. So that's that's going to be the choice after you kill Senarth. You have a choice to go left immediately. You are going to be doing ENR the Life Binder. Now, I think it's going to be a little competitive. I don't think there's a very obvious middle tier stinker. Yeah, I mean, this could be a spot to start considering Zaskarn, but I guess Zaskarn's maybe a little bit later. I think Zaskarn would be in, would definitely be in competition six? for, like, the next slot, yeah. Okay, so what are some stinkers? So Sun King, kind of, from... Castle Nathria, healer fights, usually bad. That one, I think, a little worse than most. Hmm. Prototype Pantheon. Ooh, Galacras. Galacras from, from Siege of Orgrimmar. Siege of Orgrimmar, okay. banger raid. Galacras, very, very stinky fight. Wait, what did you say? Oh, uh, Prototype Pantheon from Sepulchre. Prototype Pantheon, very bad fight. How do you feel about Prototype Pantheon versus, like, Forgotten Experiments? I think Prototype Pantheon is worse. Forgotten Experiments... I don't know. There's some dumb stuff to it. That that boss is not great either, but... I would say Galacras is a strong consideration for me. I'm going to move past Mop, though, to, like, more recent stuff. Did Shadowlands have any stinker mid-tier? Castle Nathria was, like, pretty unassailably good there. Inerva was kind of a huge letdown, but I wouldn't put it as worse. Yeah, I would say that was, like, a opportunity for greatness that was missed rather than, like, a awful fight, right? Yeah. Sanctum, Remnant, and Soul Render, both fine, fine fights. Yeah, Prototype, definitely the the weird one here. I think Lihivum is kind of, would be con in consideration for this spot because I think for most people, it just wasn't very interesting, but I would like hard fight back on that for our own experience. Uh, yeah, I mean, even if you weren't in like a race world first guild in like faded season, you you could change your strat or whatever on this. And that was kind of fun. Ooh, okay. Oldier Zul. Like- Yeah, a little late in the raid maybe for this spot, but maybe you could put this here. Yeah, it's the fifth or no, you're right. Yeah, it would be a little bit later. But I feel like was Zul actually bad or is it just the trash that I'm thinking of? Like I Oh, Zul trash could definitely go. If if we wanted to put a trash honorable mention in here, I think Zul trash could could be the the trash that you have to kill here, yeah. Yeah, Zul trash. Is... I think we did do trash last time. I remember us talking about oh, the Oh, we did. Uh, we did. Hole, we did. We did. We did. We did. The hole in Nyalotha. Yes, yes, we actually did. If I remember, we had we did two trash segments that yeah. you had to do. So I will add those actually. So after Senarth, you will have to do a uh, Zul trash, and we will potentially add another form of trash later in the raid just to uh, make it extra stinky. Um, okay, so what are what are we sitting at for this? Just okay, that one. Did you Hive could... Mind suck? I feel like it was. I think that was okay. You you could maybe make a. Drestigath argument, but this is probably early in the raid for Drestigath, but maybe not. Drestigath was really a bad boss. That was the last boss I ever played in the raid and raid led on, was Drestigath. That, you guys destroyed on that fight as well, and not a single person in your entire raid knew any of the mechanics that were going yeah, on. Yeah, exactly, and that, like, kind of tells you that yeah. the the boss probably sucks. I don't know. Like, you have to, like, kill random tentacles. Like, there, you don't feel like there's like, even a boss in the room, kind of. Like, I don't know. It just... It kind of misses on all on all angles there. I feel like the soccer boss was probably kind of cool. Um, and then Legion, does Legion have any like little mid raid? No, a lot of a lot of the stuff outside of Antorus we already talked about. Tomb, did Tomb have a bad? De oh, Desolate Host, but that's kind of that's maybe you could say it's later. You yeah, we 
we could put this here if you're if you feel strongly about it because I, I don't feel too strong about the ones we've listed so far but uh, was this fight that bad okay so the concept of desolate host was cool it's just like every other fight i think there's been a few fights like this in other mmos even where like someone is like in the shadow realm and someone is in the upstairs phase but it's the same platform but like a different phase and if you collide with someone in the other phase you remove a debuff that's like the whole bit of the fight this was a, a boss that looked like really really cool going in but then you just like three tanked it and you had a tank tank all the ads at the door and ignore them and then you just killed the fight so like yeah, and it never really it died in like 10 pulls or less just like a okay, complete that's pretty main. bad. Yeah, that's pretty bad. I'm going to go ahead and object it. We can think about that later, maybe. I'm going to put Galacrass here. I think Galacrass, if anyone played back in Siege, uh, one of the better raids, um, it was very bad. So let's just do uh, yeah, let's do Galacrass. Cool looking mount, though, but a little too stinky for me. All right, works for me. Uh, get some more old expansion deserving candidates in here yeah sort of noticing a theme with this and like hellfire assault as well of like the kinds of bosses that are going to end up here yeah almost always adds bad vehicles usually bad as well and then there's a fantastic combination of those two things that will surely occur later or, or technically okay now we have the official mid-raid wall we can certainly make the next two fights after this also like mid raid fights if they were super bad but i think the uh the elephant in the room we have to talk about scarn uh it's so weird because i think going into the tier everyone was super high on this boss it was like this is so cool you're like fighting against time you have it's like there's rng in the room but you have a deterministic way to deal with it i don't know just the concept was sick and then you do it on progression. We liked the boss. Like if you pull everyone in our guild, we enjoyed pulling that fight, but we did it like pretty organically. We did it as it should have been, I guess, except for like at the very, very, very end. But the community, like what happened after that, the killing the boss on the wall thing, the basically every hall of fame spot was people who did the cheese strat before it got nerfed midweek for the first time ever. And then the version that it was after that, where now you have to bait it on your raid instead of the boss. It's just... Everything combined, I just imagine when you ask 10 years from now, people's lid, least favorite mid-raid boss, Skarn's going to instantly fucking come up. So, like, I don't know. I don't know what you think. Yeah, again, like, if we're giving old raids a little bit of extra bonus points for being old, this one's got to get some extra minus points because it's literally the most recent raid. So, I agree. I think this did so much bad that it is a shame because there was a lot of potential here and... and... You know, there was a, a skeleton of a good fight that was underneath this, but the flaws were too big. The way that the nerf was handled left a really bad taste in a lot of people's mouth. I'm down to put this in. Like, I think you put this in the raid, people are going to look at it and they're going to be like, oh, yeah, it's a Skarn Belongs there. Oh, yeah, that'll that'll farm you. You could, I mean, that's a that's a good thumbnail even. Like, that would, that oh, would, yeah. that would just farm you. Yeah, I, I, let's just take a quick session second to think about bosses that maybe compete with this so like near middle of the raid stinkers so people are saying dathia i think dathia left a lot to be desired i wouldn't i wouldn't put it at the level of scarn right like that yeah the... dathia was maybe worse for like race to world first nerf timing but the you know like hall of fame nerf timing affected a lot more guilds on the scarn gorefiend see gorefiend is like a very well-renowned good boss that people really remember doing well. right Gorfiend and Anduin and Holandris would all potentially, like, they all had guild-killing characteristics about them, right? Because they they were really hard. But at least if your boss is really hard and fun for people that like really hard bosses, then that's cool, right? But Ziskarn was not that for anybody except for probably literally you guys. Yeah, a lot of, lot of high-quality bo mid-tier bosses back then. Randomly, a lot of the last couple of expansions, mid-tier bosses have been really, really good. Or, or had been average and had a lot of cool qualities to them. They just, like, didn't hit. Yeah, I don't know if anything's going to really compete with Skarn here. I'm, uh... Yeah, the, the wall spot, it, it's weird because it's kind of, like, mid-tier but also kind of wall. Because in terms of, like, raid placement, there's, like, Council of Blood from Castle Nathria that there are a lot of people that didn't like that fight. I didn't think it was that bad, but I know there's a... That, that one is one maybe that there are people that that's their pet least favorite boss. Yeah, I think Council of Blood was maybe the worst thing they ever did was you should have like really cool and interesting choices on how to kill that boss, but the the ways to kill it at the end were not even remotely balanced. And and that 
was something that I think they could have done much better. I think people ended up doing like the Blood Lady last at some point, but that was after like a lot of nerfs to it. So I don't really know. People are saying Fetid Devourer. That's an interesting hmm. take. I think that's mainly a like, that's when the Race World first was out and it was really popular uh, being streamed. And it was just boss that was bugged for a while. So people are like taking the opinion of something that they watched. But if you remember doing Fetid Devourer, it was a pretty fucking good boss. Like, I think Fetid was actually, like, really solid. I would not put that there. Yeah, it was kind of fiddly, depending on what role you were playing. Like, it was one of those fights where, you, you like, a debuff spreads and you feel it's unfair or whatever. But, I don't know. I, I thought that fight was not bad. I would say I don't have a specific boss to point to, but I'm just going to shout out the entire middle of Battle of Dazar lore as all being a big disappointment. Yes. I was thinking about that, but you can't really point... Like, it's not like Rastakhan was an egregious fight on the merits, right? Conclave of the Chosen, I mean, it was bad, but it was forgettably bad. And we're looking for, like, unforgettably bad yeah. bosses, right? Um, like, all of them as yeah. a thing. Like, I would say the middle of Battle of Dazar lore, Conclave through... Uh, Conclave and Rastakhan specifically, I would compare to those two together being, like, as bad as like, you know, Guardian and Fate Scribe, like after Painsmith, mm -hmm. like it would be that level of like, you know, it's just a disappointing area of the raid. But I wouldn't say either of them individually are as bad as like those fights were. So I I, 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 uh, I, I would probably leave that off the list, but just an honorable mention that like Battle of the Czar lore, a lot of cool bosses did not live up to uh, uh, expectation. I think we, we talk about Zul. I didn't mind Zul. I yeah, I think the rogue, it basically nerfing sub rogue forever. For actually, I think sub rogues were were insane on Zul, and I think they were their funnel was nerfed, and I don't think they were meta again for like four years. <laughs> so that was kind of insane. As a blaze of glory for the spec for sure. Yeah, I I was. Uh, it's hard for me to be objective about this because I was the only rogue main, and we had like seven rogue alts in. But wow, that was a. Uh... Like, you're just doing 20% more damage to them because you have gear and they don't, and they're... It's just, oh, man. What a rush. That was uh, that was fun, but, uh, you know, there were 19 people in the raid. They're having a lot less fun than me on that fight. Hmm, okay. Uh, I think I think we're... Uh, dude, I think this is Skarn. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm for Skarn here. I don't think it's actually... What I don't know what we did last time, but Skarn seems better than all these other yeah, options. Yeah, what, a, quite what a, a fall off for Skarn, truly. Like it was uh had so much potential. I guess my take on it is I'm I think there were some pretty serious structural flaws with this encounter. The fact that the room fills up so quickly with traps, but then that you can live indefinitely at the wall. Oh, that's a huge is, problem. I think I think just disqualifies this from being in the top tiers because that, Agree. that just I mean that just neutralizes the encounter. We we were we were talking about it and we were like we, we actually could just do that like the only problem is that the if before the room is full up the bombs will spawn in bad places while you're trying this but if the room is literally just all on fire at the start i'm pretty sure you could reasonably safely do 100 to 0 in a safe spot on the wall and that would be uh that would be bad yeah i remember you and i were talking about it like right as that three tank thing was was starting to get done and the wall stuff and we were talking about how like it was losing like a oh, point dude, to do for that and then dude. people took it to like the next level over the next like yeah. week and they were four tank or five tank seven healer against the wall for 14 minutes we raided the bosses in the so we like we did like a pre-raid guess based on design yeah and then we reviewed that list based on reality at least up until that point and it was right we did the rating right before people started cheesing it like really really cheesing it and our rating was much higher than what people would have done after that. i remember people being like bro didn't you rate scarn like fucking like pretty decent on your list and i was like oh fuck like like uh yeah this is a bad time man it's crazy how perspective can change based on like how hard someone abuses something is is because that always existed but it just ended up being the whole fight yeah it just took over. Uh, what are we at now? We've got the the pathway, the left and the right path. I think one of these should be like a single targety fight, and then the other one can be like a mechanic y or ad fight of some kind. How's that sound? Sure. Yeah, that's uh, that's certainly fine. Also, I'm just gonna say this right now. I'm pretty sure the second to last boss is a hard lock. Like that is a. Oh yeah. If I remember correctly, you are unwilling to budge on the boss. I will, I will not be taking any questions about the second to last boss here. So if we... Okay, so if, my if only... If there's anything else you need, you got to fit it in here. Exactly. Cause... So my only my only 
the reason why I'm bringing that up now is it's possible that other bad second to last bosses could go here. Yeah, that's fine. So so yeah, so any <laughs> any second to last boss that is like if we're really struggling to find one here, we could maybe pick a second to last boss that like really really sucked. Okay, so top of my head, I think of Sanctum when it comes Yes, up I think we did the Sanctum bosses maybe here. Like I think we literally might have done Fate Scribe and Guardian last time we when we did this the first time. Yeah, that just like goes to show you in a very small way how how bad and how much of a letdown that raid was cuz it was like first three bosses were pretty good, the 9 was actually a great third boss, Soul Render Remnant top tier bosses leading up to the mid-raid wall. Painsmith, maybe the best mid-raid wall ever. I think we did have it as our mid-raid wall on the on our best bosses, make the best raid of all time list. And then it just fell off a fucking cliff, man. Like, like Fate Scribe, Guardian, which was following Sludge Fist, right? So it's like, this: the expectations for Guardian are like yeah. insane. And then it was just so mediocre and so flawed. And then, and then you do fucking Kel'Thuzad. So, like, you just remember leaving Painsmith, and it's just bad. Everything is bad. But I don't know if any of them truly... Actually, I don't know. KT, KT's really bad. Uh, K... Yeah, I would be fine with any of those three of them in either of these two slots, yeah. But there are some contenders. Magmarax is one we just discussed. Oh, as... man. I mean, I feel like it's hard to at least not talk about it for this sort of thing, because... Magmarax has grown on me. And I don't know why. I so we rarely do it in farm because you can you only need to do seven bosses for your box. So we've just been skipping Skarn and Magmarax for a long time outside of sales. I think really the weird thing with Magmarax is again, it's like the expectations, right? Like Taros is a great single target fight recently. Rashok is like one of maybe the best single target fight ever. So like non end boss. And then it's like you expect so much from Magmarax and it just seems like a classic boss with no mechanics. That being said, if our guild is going to wipe to any boss and farm, it's Magmarax. Like, that boss just... It's, like, sneaky hard, and, like, you just randomly die. So, like, I kind of give it some respect for that, and I think people have, like, kind of underrated its difficulty over time. It's also one of the most fun fights to heal. If you ever hear healers talk about Magmarax, they're like, yo, I... I you, like, you're, you're, like, hitting the boss for the first two minutes, but then it's, like, a very real healing fight, and that's, like, really fun. So... Yeah, I, I I don't know if I really... You know what? Honestly, if you asked me after the raid, I think Magmarax would have gone here for sure, and I just don't think I'd put it here now. I don't know what you think about it. Yeah, I've also been enjoying it much more during farm than I did on Prog. We do kill it every week because we got to be cycling people in and out for boxes, so we got to kill all nine bosses for that. Yeah. And uh, But we we like... This this boss, we actually... We basically one-shot every week. We, we wiped to like... Sark and Echo of Neltharian, and we pick a random earlier boss to troll oh, to every time. But this one, I, I don't know, it's, uh, we moved to kind of just YOLOing it and not using the weak ores and stuff and just having people, like, catch and then be in whatever group they caught in, and it, it has been more fun during farm, so maybe it, it, it can avoid being placed on this list, but... Magmarax also had one of my most interesting dev interactions that I noted, which is I think a lot of players all the time are like, man, I wish these bosses would swap places. I know we talked about that after this raid. Like, man, wouldn't it have been fucking yeah. awesome if Rashok could have been after Skarn and, like, they could have truly made that fight, like, really hard. And I, they actually said that in a dev interview. Like, one of the devs was like, oh, yeah, just, like, small side note. I think in hindsight, we would have, like, swapped places with Magmarax and Rashok. And I was like, oh, that's, like, really... I didn't think they would ever, like, say that. Mm -hmm. You know, if I had, like, a crystal ball and if I could change kind of one thing, I think I would probably, you know, in hindsight, maybe swap Rashok and Magmarax oh. um, in terms oh, of man. their position in the raid. Um, just from the perspective of, like, I think there were more knobs to tune up for Rashok. Like, if, if Rashok was in that same position, I imagine you could see that very quickly turning into, like, a Sludge Fist-esque tuning target there. Because that kind of just says, like, the person who did the later boss, like, kind of goofed it up. <laughs> That's, like, an interesting uh, concession from them. Yeah, it's tough as well, because, like, the I think the rooms are locked in fairly early. Like, the, the layout of the raid, right? It's kind of hard for them to uh, move around. But I feel like there was a lot of potential for Magmarax as well. Like, I don't think it was a good boss by any stretch, but it is, it has been kind of fun to rekill. So I'm, I'm willing to give it a pass off of this list. I, I would be down for pick any two of three of this Sanctum stuff between Sylvanas and Painsmith TBH. Because, yeah, like, so, all three of those were just abysmal for their own reasons. Yeah, so I, while you were talking, screenshot and put 
Kel'Thuzad in one of those slots. I just, I okay. think, I think Kel'Thuzad is unassailably bad. It is violently trash. Like it, it's a very, very bad boss. There was a com complete miss. Was completely cheesed. A side note was a much better fight after they changed it from like the cheese method. But yeah, really, really stinky uh, boss. I think certainly way worse than Guardian and Fate Scribe. Between Guardian and Fate Scribe, I don't know if you could. I mean, there was design issues with Guardian, but, like, the main problem was that it was just fucking easy. Like, we just got done with Sludge Fist being, like, a, it dies at the very end, and the fact that this boss just got... It could have gotten one shot by, like, any of the good guilds on week one is, like, that's just lame. But that's, like, a tuning... It's, like, not as... I guess that matters, but it's not, like, as bad as... The other bosses have, like, yeah. huge, huge fucking problems, so... Well, Fate Scribe was also sort of tuning, right? It was, like... We've made this ring that you can always do in 45 seconds, and we made the intermission 45 seconds. Like, oops, right? That's, uh... Yeah. If we made that number a little bit different, and you had to, like, go the opposite way when there, when it was a short path, then... It would have been a really cool fight. Maybe this would be uh, a pretty fun fight, but... Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm leaning towards Fate Scribe. I think Fate Scribe goes here. Okay, I'm down for that. Yeah, I mean, I, th I do think Guardian is the... Guardian and Magmarax both definitely, if we wanted to have, like, a bad Sludge Fist replacement, would go there, but... I think mm, oh, I, you know what? I kind of, you know well. what? I'm kind of, I'm kind of with you with that. Actually, uh, it's, it's whichever way you want to look at it. I think every raid, if you're going to make a sick raid, there needs to be a Sludge Fist in that raid. There needs to be a Rashok on that raid. I very strongly believe that. Or a Rhygalon. It can be a second to last boss. It can be a mid tier, whatever. So you could also make the argument that like, oh, in the worst raid of all time, it just wouldn't have any of those. It would just have a bunch of shitty fucking stupid ad fights the whole time. And that's just what would make it bad. <laughs> so like, yeah, yeah, I think it like kind of fits more to have Fate Scribe there. Um, worst raid. Yeah. Man. All right. Broodkeeper, I will say Broodkeeper did save the like ad fight uh, rhetoric a bit uh, or stigma, I guess I should say. Like because they, they were doing insanely good second to last bosses for like a really long time. Like you could name a million of them. And then they were just like, all right, let's just do Stone Legion Generals. And like that was really bad. And then let's let's do Kel'Thuzad, the raid right after that. That's really bad. They nailed it with Rhygalon. But then we see Broodkeeper and it's just like, man... It's just these ad fights are just so much better when they're earlier and they don't matter. And then they actually made Broodkeeper like pretty good. You know, it was like, I was thinking like Broodkeeper is about as good as an ad boss could be. So just shout out Broodkeeper for not being totally dog shit uh, in what you were supposed to be. All right. So worst second to last boss of all time. This is uh this isn't close. I'll just let, I know you're really passionate about this. You can, you can tell the stream about the boss that goes here. Oh, dude. This is not even the worst second to last boss of all time. This is the worst boss of all time and possibly the worst thing of all time. Stone Legion Generals is just an abomination of a, of a boss encounter. It does every single thing wrong that a boss can do wrong. It has funny, wacky spell queuing where... And I'm going to mostly be talking about the pre-nerfs versions. There were several nerfs to this encounter that made it more tolerable. Never made it fun, but did make it more tolerable. But just about the first version of this fight that was done... You had wacky spell queuing where you'd be pushing the boss and whether or not you got like an extra clear before you pushed was some fun RNG that would make the fight way or less, uh, way, way easier or harder uh, on any given pull. Phase one, you were fighting like one of the bosses and a Goliath and Goliaths, right? And that was really hard. Phase two, you were fighting one of the bosses, bosses and Goliaths and that was like really hard. And then phase three, you just fought two of the bosses and no Goliaths, and that was actually way easier. So yep. the difficulty curve on this fight was just you spent two or three hundred pulls bashing your head against like that phase one intermission push and nuclear and difficulty. Wins. And and yeah, the thing the thing in the first intermission that was just criminal oh. was what was the name of the guy flying in the air? General Draven. Yeah, that Gen was General Draven. Yeah, young General Draven flies around on Stone Legion Generals, and he just on some pulls would just be fucking like brrr, just fucking like just rapid fire shooting down commandos to to have in your AoE to actually clear the phase in time and the the variance could be you have seven ads during that AoE clear or two literally two and it not uncommon either where he would just like his controller would be malfunctioning in his little ship and he would just be unable to shoot down the commandos and you would just straight up wipe or you would have to learn P2 with entirely different spell queuing because you got pushed so late in the intermission. So, dude, like, ugh. Then you had the joy of people just getting targeted by, like, the Goliath, and you just needed, like, an instant react bop to save them if the Goliath had stacks. You had the joy of having, like, a no-healing debuff on the whole raid that you were trying to work through while the winds were blowing everybody back. The correct uh, way to deal with a mechanic on this fight was to bring three 
uh, Resto Shamans and with Onk Totem, so your priest could mass dispel all four people. You link to keep them alive by using the raid's health as like leverage, and then you kill the priest at least four times during the encounter as by far the most optimal way to do the fight. <laughs> and yeah. Uh, just onk totem it, yeah. The was, the wicked uh... blades oftentimes would just do like three sixties around your character and then just like shoot itself into the raid for no reason and you just wipe. For a while on PTR, you could stone form off the bleed, making dwarf by far the most broken raid race for any class that's ever been on a fight. They'd thankfully fix that in time. And then maybe the worst thing ever is you get to the last phase and you one shot it. The where you, yeah. you you're fighting these stupid fucking ads for like. 10 it was also long as fuck this was like a 10 minute way longer than 10 minute second to last boss which is just on it's so bad you finally get to the last phase and you're like oh we're fighting both these bosses the same wait we have to do both of these mechanics at the same time instead of just one set but there's no ads oh well that's just easy as fuck turns out the only difficulty the entire fight was killing these goliaths and ads in time and yeah just ah uh, fight sucks so, that was yeah misery just the progression experience, it, it was so long, and then just randomly you kill it and you feel nothing inside. You're just, it, like, there, it's it's not even, like, relief. It's it's just, like, there's an emptiness that it, now you can finally start rebuilding your, you know, emotions. And also, one of the really worst ways to wipe ever is when everything on your screen looks fine, but then your rage just instantly dead and you could have done nothing to help it, and that is people missing eruption soaks. So I think, like, eruption as a mechanic is fine, but it is an extremely frustrating way to die when it seems like everything is going fine, but just one person forgot one thing and everyone's dead. And it's not even something you're seeing. It's why Anduin was really frustrating for a lot of people. You're just, like, downstairs, and then, you know, you're just all dead. And who knows what happened up there, but something happened. Um, so that was, uh, that was bad. Let's think of some, let's do some honorable mention second-to-last boss uh, stinkers. I think Carapace was kind of bad but also like kind of epic like the giant fucking tentacles in p1 like p1 was a dog shit phase of carapace p2 was largely a dog shit phase the thing is, is the last phase was actually sick as fuck like so it kind of saves the whole fight yeah it's they've had a hard time when they've made these like two phase or two boss fight fights right like Nazoth and Deathwing both pretty rough, you know, two phases, right? Spine and Deathwing, I think another boss we could consider for this spot. But I agree, Carapace had some redeeming characteristics to it. Like there that was there was some fun to be had there, and there was some spectacle, and they were trying to tell a story with the fight, and I think they succeeded with it pretty well of like, you know, busting into Nazoth and Oh yeah. Uh, that stuff. So I, I I think that it I don't think it was good, but I think that it did enough good stuff that it should get a pass for its uh, the the bad parts of it. One of those really bad parts, dude. Pet AI. I don't know if you played a hunter that tier at all. No, but If yeah. you were in P two trying to like do anything with a hunter pet, it was pure misery. You couldn't you couldn't get your pet to do anything in inside that P two area. And speaking of bad, you said it's like a good story to the end of the raid. Speaking of bad story, uh, Spine of Deathwing, second to last boss of Dragon Soul, where you are like. The, the previous expansion's antagonist was the Lich King, like, maybe one of the best antagonists in, like, all of gaming lore, you know? And then, like, you follow that up with Deathling, this giant dragon, and you end up just fight his back. You just fight his fucking back, and, like, that's just, like, how did this become a thing, you know? That being said, I don't think it's really in contention for this spot, so for someone who did Spine of Deathling, it wasn't actually a dog shit fight. It was a really hard fight, but it was actually kind of cool. Like, you had... Like, big damage amp phases that, like, were super relevant. Uh, the tank kiting thing was whatever, but, like, I think more people are disappointed with, like, the lore of how Deathwing ended up being a thing and Madness even being more of a disappointment. But Spine was just, like, super hard and people didn't like that, really. Okay, you, you didn't scenarios, play that, yeah. I propose as a potential Ooh. honorable mention for this as well. This was a, uh, a fight that was pretty, pretty contentious. I, I know that it, like... I th I think you can make an argument that be behind Ursoc, this was like one of the good things to come out of Emerald yeah, Nightmare. Yeah, that would be But it is thing. also one that I know people, there were a lot of people who did not like the way that like the roots would target you and you wouldn't yeah. get any warning. Yeah, no, I, I think that's more of like a bad mechanic. That's like a famously bad mechanic. I think Scenarius yeah. was a really, really good fight. In fact, one that's uh really overshadowed by, 
how easy, you know, strangely enough, Xavius is also a really good fight. It was just, it's just overshadowed by how easy it was and how cheesable Serenity of Madness worked as a mechanic with like the you can die once thing on that fight. But yeah, but Brambles, if you guys didn't know this, there was these Brambles that like kind of went around on Scenarius through players and they were targeted on one person in the raid, but there was no way to know it was on you. There was not an arrow over your head. There was not a debuff. It just, you kind of had to watch it and it would randomly swap targets and you had to always be looking at it. And it would fucking one shot you. So like that was like a really frustrating part of the fight, I think. So yeah, I, I, I would definitely, definitely agree there. I don't know if there's any other bad second to last boss. Second to last bosses is actually something Blizzard does really well. Usually up until like the uh, Shadowlands, they, they, like there was never two raids in a row with like not an amazing second to last boss until whatever it was into Sanctum. Kel'Thuzad and Stone Legion. Yeah, yeah, yeah Kel'Thuzad and Stone Legion. Yeah, I, I will say, I think Zakul had a lot of negatives to it. I know that there were some positives to this fight as well that was uh, that some people would enjoy, but this was definitely a fight that a lot of people who played it had a pretty bad time. It, it was one of those fights where, sort of like the eruption on Stone Legion Generals, there, there were people in your raid who could not see or help the people that were like downstairs doing the hard part uh, in the like Delirium Realm, and you would just kind of be pulling the boss. I remember I was an elemental shaman that tier. I was in Ghost Wolf AFKing for the first minute of the fight because we had to stop damage like like you do on half the fights. And then, you know, we'd get to the next phase. I'd kill some adds for a bit. And then we'd get to the next phase and we'd send three people down and we would wipe to them not doing their jobs right. And that process was a very frustrating one oh, for yeah. me. It was, there's not, it was, I felt powerless, you know? Yeah, I would say most people, I, I, I know I really enjoyed that fight. There's a lot of other people who did, but it is pretty polarizing. All right, so for last bosses... I, I don't remember what we did here before. Uh, I know, like... I know what we did. I remember. Was it Madness? It was Madness. I wanted it to be Queen Ajara, but you, you wanted it to be Madness of Deathwing, and I I think I think we ended up on that, but yeah. my vote was, is still for Queen Ajara on this one, but I I didn't play Madness, so I'm, I'm still happy to put that there, uh, if your opinion on that is still as... Uh, yeah, let's talk yeah. about Mad... Yeah, we can talk about, about Queen Ashara. It's like, randomly, the ad phase is like the hardest part of the fight. Yeah, actually, wait, that fight does do a lot of things wrong. So it has like an RPP1. Previously in other raids, like Gul'dan, for example, there's an RPP1 on Heroic, but on Mythic, they just skip all that shit and get right into the fight. On Ashara, they didn't do that. So you just have this P1 that exists for absolutely no reason, completely no point for it to be there. And then P2 is when it starts... You have this like soaking mechanic, which I think I think the whole like soaking the runes thing is okay, but like the LOS thing, I think LOS is bad almost all the time. I think it's been better done better on some fights rather than others. Like on Jailer, I think LOSing is fine, but like on this boss, it was just like a main thing and it was super super weird. And then the last phase, kind of the same thing. If you can get through the least epic part of the fight, which is just killing ads, you get to the last phase and the boss like instantly dies. That just feels bad, you know. Yeah, it was a nice like two or three heal fight as well, where your healers just have nothing to do because you're line of sighting all the damage or getting one shot, and then your your healers are there to press barrier on like two spots in the fight, which is uh is quite bad. The 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 line of sight mechanic in general on that fight, you you would just get like the CD of the arcane missiles and you would line, and you get back in range, and that was the mechanic, yeah. which was pretty bad. My my thought was madness of Deathwing. It's a boss that is supposed to be like the Lich King of this expansion. Maybe now in these expansions, people don't care about this as much because like there's no epicness to whoever the bad guy in the expansion is like there used to be. So this was directly following that. It's kind of like why the balance in the game right now in Mythic Plus feels bad, mostly because the balance right before this was fucking insane. It feels extra bad. It's like the same thing. Like Madness felt extra bad because Lich King existed. And it was a boss. And Illidan before as well. Yeah. Ill Illidan and killed Jaden or whatever, is the, if you want to count that too. So it was yeah. like, it was sick. It was like, it just kind of like, it was the, it, in a lot of people's minds, it was like the end of WoW mattering as far as like the story, I think. And like the bosses you were fighting in raid. Yeah, the boss died in like 20 minutes in like an average guild after you spent like 300 pulls on Spine. So it just was a huge fucking letdown and looks pretty cool, but like, it's just kind of a lame fight. You're like fighting his hands. You know, for like most of the fight, and then his head like falls on the ground, and then you kill his head. <laughs> That's like kind of lame. People in chat are saying Sylvanas. Huh. A lot of okay. people, like more than if, let me count actually, before we brought it up, uh, seven people type Sylvanas. That's so, really interesting to me. It ha Sylvanas had problems. Like P1 was okay. It was one of the many P1s that was plagued by, you know, you, you would kind of have a hard time for the first 20 or 30 pulls in it. 
and then you would get it down and you would have to stop DPS for the next 100 bowls, uh, which is always not fun. But P1 I don't think was too bad. P2 was was pretty bad on the lower difficulties. Like, it was atrocious, I would say, on Heroic. Yeah, way better but on, on Mythic. On it Myth wasn't that yeah, bad. On, on Mythic, yeah. yeah, basically, if you guys didn't do it on Mythic, on Heroic, you know, you go to, like, one side, the other side, the other side. On Mythic, you kind of do both sides at the same time, so it's just faster. However, I would say, when we were criticizing fights, you know, like, this raid obviously has a seven and a half minute end boss, but, like, most nine minute end bosses are, like, universally fucking insanely good. Like, sub 10 minute fights end bosses are usually really, really insane. When you look at the fights that are longer than that, you could almost always pick a point of the fight that just could have been better or could have not existed, and the fight is just objectively better, and Sylvanas is one of those. Like, yeah. if P2 is is uh, sped up a lot or is kind of just not there, the fight would have just been a better fight. Like, P I, P3 is amazing. one of the best phases they've made oh, of a man. fight ever, right? Like, that, yeah. that phase, it has this beautiful combination of, like, strategy and tactics mattering and also reaction times and quick thinking mattering it's uh that's really good like that that phase is i i believe saves sylvanas from from this list yeah i i would agree with that like if sylvanas was like i don't even think sylvanas is really close to like i think so the entire fight of sylvanas would have to be p2 for it to be competing with these bosses we're talking yeah. about like i don't even, oh yeah yeah to compete with madness or, or, Dude, or something yeah interestingly enough though the last time we talked about this was before Dragonflight. Where does Razageth end on this list? Pretty low. I would, I would say Razageth is like really bad, like twentieth percentile boss or something, maybe fifteenth. Yeah, I don't think it's down in the like fifth or wherever to get on this list. But yeah, unfortunately, it, it does. It has five phases, of which like three of them are filler, so that's pretty bad. Yeah, it, the Ra most Razageth has parts phase. of the fight that are just better than what other fights do. Yeah. Oh man, like the second intermission on Razagath. Oh, what? Like, yeah, what, what are we doing here? Uh, in, indefensible. There is, there is absolutely no reason that you do not immediately like, start P three yet. At what point are you making a fight and you're like, you're ten and a half minutes into the fight and you're like, yep, need another phase here. That like, I don't have enough phases in my fight. I got to put another one here. Like, come on, take me to the last platform. Yeah, P two Razagath, awesome. I think just genuinely whole phase, awesome. P one problematic, but it it existed. P3 was great before they nerfed it and ended up being a total joke. Very similar to Stone Legion Generals. You just get there and the and progression is over. Um, yeah. And that's bad. But yeah, the, the intermissions were like indefensibly bad. Um, yeah, I, I think... Uh, I don't know if there's another end boss that really, really I think just some people would stunk. say Gahoon, but I, I think Gahoon was really fun to prog. I think Gahoon was frustrating in like farm, but that boss had a lot of... It was pretty cool to to play in progression. There was a lot going on. It it did suffer from something that I would say like all BFA end bosses suffered from. Of like like on Ajara and Azoth, your phase one is just killing tentacles or ads or whatever for two to six minutes, and that sucks. Yeah, but. people are saying Jailer. I think Jailer was definitely nah. not a great fight, but I know there are parts of Jailer again that are like all time really really fucking good, and that kind of puts you off of the contention for that. Just, if anything, it was like, just, did Jailer have a phase that didn't need to be there? Yep. <laughs> just like most bosses that are like 12, 12 plus minutes. But yeah, they, uh, dude, my, my guild is fucking getting me so good. They have this dumbass fucking bit where like, they know that I really like Lei Shen, so they just talk about how bad of a Lei Shen boss is. So they're just typing in my stream, just like, Max, why isn't Lei Shen the worst second to last boss? Just fucking, it's getting me good. <laughs> uh, yeah, the... I think so. What? So I guess we're at the same point. We are battling between Queen Ashara and Madness of Deathwing. I wonder how we can. Oh, people are saying Cthulhu unkillable. Like, bro, that's just like. Come on, are... man. I wasn't born yet when that came out. Okay, I was, but it, I was not old. Yeah, I was. I was very young. Shaw of Fear not in contention. Twenty minute end boss actually. Kind of. Okay. I mean, it's 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 in contention just because the fight was fucking 20, 22 minute long world first uh, Shaw of Fear kill. And if you think about it, the fight does kind of stink. What, what, like method, Shaw of Fear uh, world first. You get like a haste buff for the rest of the fight once you make it to the last phase, right? Like for the rest of the night on attempts as well, right? Is that that real lore? The first time within your like, yeah, the raid soft reset when you went to bed, but when you logged back in, it would, the first pull would be like a long P1. And then after that, you would have a 50% haste buff to 
uh, help you get back into P2. But the 22 minute kill time was with that buff. Oh, that is pretty bad. Hang on. Is yeah. This from the from the top rope, Shaw of Fear gonna beat out. Madness yeah. And, like uh, it, yeah. Like this is the you... world first kill of this, and this vod is 24 minutes long. And the entire phase here is just like three total people doing mechanics and passing a ball, and no one else is doing anything. The ads basically. Whoever is holding the thing with the extra action button, the ads chase you and you just have to throw it to someone else. So you formed a triangle formation and you just threw it around the triangle to keep the ads grouped under the boss. And that was the whole fight. There was there was nothing else in this phase. That Dude, come to think of it, this might be a... Yeah, off the top ropes, out of contention immediately. It was so long ago though, man. Yeah, it was less long ago than Madness though. True. I think I'd be willing to... You know what? I'm going to put my answer on this. And it's just because of recent events. I think Blizzard, and I, they agreed to this kind of in an interview, that like bosses around the 10 minute marker or a little shorter are just like kind of what the goal should be for an end boss. So I will use the timing of this list coming out or this boss order. And I will use the longest end boss of all time to hammer the point home that long bosses are just bad because they're long. I can, I can get behind this. Yeah, they definitely are. Like I think... End of expansion, we can go over the 10 minute mark, but if other than that, you know, let's let's keep it tight. Let's keep one bloodlust per boss, please. All right, so I can slam it. All right, this so and then the honorable mention runner ups are Queen Ashara and Madness of Deathwing. Yeah, all right. Oh, random picture of me on stream that I was showing the other day. <laughs> Very good, that's good. All right, you guys can go back in the VOD and freeze that if you want to see it. It's me, it's me back when I was thick as shit. Damn, I was going to work out all the time. Oh, we didn't talk. We didn't do a second trash segment, but we don't have to. But the, the I think last time we talked about the the hole from Nylotha. Oh yeah, yep. I'll do. Go, I'll do. A, I'll do a little arrow. Here we go. So right after you kill Skarn, you immediately have to. You can't jump down the hole. You have to complete the entirety of the of the whole trash, as if you were going all the way down to Ilganoth in in Nylotha. Good. Yeah, that's. <laughs> That is perfect. And you can't skip any of it or else your raid instantly dies. And they respawn. All right. That is it. All right. So that is that is our our take on the worst raid bot of the, what the theoretical worst raid ever would be. How many things got added from uh since we last did this? It's, is it just Skarn? That, or, I, we definitely changed some of our takes on some of these other ones, but I don't remember which. But yeah, it's uh, Skarn is the only one. From, oh, and Senarth. Skarn and Senarth are from this expansion. Yeah. Yep, two, so two new additions, which is would be a bad sign, but there have also been some fucking excellent bosses in this uh, in this expansion so far as well. Mostly in this raid, the the one that we just did. Um, all right, cool. Thanks for thanks for the call, man. This was always always a fun time. Yeah, have a good one. All right, see you, man. Bye.